Welcome again to Holiness That Behaves. I'm your host, Percy R. Chase, pastor of the Community Baptist Church here in Durham, North Carolina, 4821 Durham. We want to, um, we want to look at Psalm 1. How about, how about let's look at Psalm 1 to, today. We want to discuss uh, Psalm 1 verse by verse as we normally do. And we're happy that you've tuned in to be with us. We want to thank all of our viewers, uh, our contributors, and, and everyone near and far for your steadfast uh, relationship with Community Baptist Church and this ministry. And we want to thank you for your prayers and your financial support throughout this pandemic. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day. We ask for the illumination of our minds as we study together thy word. Show us, O oh, Heavenly Father, what you would have us to know today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 1. Be back in just a moment. Giving God's way. Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? Malachi 3, verse 8. Community Baptists and Friends. You may bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse. Due to the COVID-19, Community Baptist Church will be open to receive your offerings each Tuesday from 12 o'clock p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You may also send your tithes and or offerings by mail. Please mail to Community Baptist Church or 821 Barbie Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. You may also give your tithes and offerings online. Please visit our website at cbcdurham.net backslash giving. Psalm 1, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. This, this first verse in Psalm 1 is, is God's concept for man in terms of what happiness should be for, for man, for mankind, for men, for women, for everybody, for you and me. I'll get it right after a while. But 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 this song illustrates, shows, teaches us who are students of the word, livers of the word, what God's concept for man is for what happiness is. A lot of things can make us happy. A new house, a new car, that, that makes us happy, but that's not God's concept of happiness for, for you and me. Happiness to God is not your, your team winning the championship or, 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 or finding Finding the love of your life. That's not happiness to God. Happiness to God has a moral tenor to it. It has a, it has a right, a rightness, a wrongness, a, a moral character about it. it. It doesn't consist in things that we may acquire or possess. Or, or, or dreams and, and goals that we may attain. We, we, we can be very successful in those things, but, but to God, a man should be happy, find happiness, or happiness should be in regards to the moral tenor and character of one's life. That, 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 that's... That's what we, we see here. Blessed is the man, listen, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, that standeth, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. I mean, it opens up contrasting negatively what, what, a, what a happy man doesn't do. It, it doesn't talk about the man being happy having things, the man being happy accomplishing things. No, the, the, the man is happy knowing how to handle his, his life with respect 
to ungodly things, to things of, of sinners, to, to, to things of scornful people. That, that's what happiness is in, in, in God's eyes. Blessed is the man that walketh not in, in, in the counsel of the, the ungodly. What, 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 what is an ungodly person? An ungodly person is someone who's restless, who has ungoverned passions, uh, who, um, who, who's not self-controlled. And, 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 and the psalm opens, blessed is the man who does not what? walk in the council, does not agree to this type of person, to, to, to their uncontrolled attitudes and passions, to, 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 their, to their restless notions of, 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 of doing something bad. God says, that man is happy. That man is happy that does not Walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Does not stand in the way of sinners. Sinners, sinners are people who who go to do something wrong, and and the happy man is that man or happy person is that is that person that does not get in that person's way or does not become a part of that person. Does not follow that person. Does not go with that person. That 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 that's the concept that God had for mankind. For you and me, in terms of what what happiness should be, ought to be, for you and me, where God is concerned. Now, and those other things that I mentioned, th th those are exclusively for us. That, that's what I want. That's that's what I want to achieve. But when it comes to God, there's a moral tenor to what happiness. Happiness is nor, nor, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. What's a scornful person? Scornful person, uh, that, that, that's the person that hates instruction by way of being warned against idleness. That's why they sit down, the, 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 the do nothingers, I call them, the do nothingers. They don't do nothing, they don't want to do nothing, they don't want to, they don't want to. They don't want to get out and get a job. They, 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 don't, want to, they don't want to be productive. They, they, don't want to, they don't want to expand their life. They sit in idleness. God says that person is happy that does not allow that kind of attitude to influence their opportunities and their potential. Their, 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 their doors that have opened for them. They, they don't let idleness con, con, confuse or, or control them. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, now it's, it's, it's not the key verse law that's in that verse, verse 2. The key verse is, but his delight. The key verse is delight. Because you you don't you don't meditate in God's law every now and then once in a while it's not a it's not a servitude or a several uh, relationship between between the law and, and and the person God God says God says the relationship has to have the element ingredient of joy. If, if, if you love the word, if, if, if it makes you happy handling the word of God more than a frying pan or a skillet, then, then you'll meditate day and night. You, you'll be in the, the word of God all the time. So, so verse 2 is, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he'll meditate day and night if he's happy, happy doing it. Verse 3, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. He shall be like a tree planted 
by the rivers of waters. The man is happy, the woman is happy, the person is happy when they are in a desirable condition. And, and notice, notice the verse says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, not river, but rivers of water. Not a river of water, but rivers of water. That, that, that means that the condition is desirable because there are many channels of running, flowing, support, water. If one channel dries up, the tree will not become barren. It has a reservoir of, of a health. It, 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 it's not dependent on one source of strength or aid. Rivers of water. It's like it's like, um, it's like when Jesus was at the well in, 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 in Sychar and the woman was there and, and they talked about it and he asked her for a drink of water and, 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 and Jesus got to the point where he said, well, he who drinks from this water will thirst again, Jacob's well. But there's a well of water springing up into everlasting life. It has channels, reservoirs, other sources. It doesn't depend on one source. That man is happy when his desirable condition has been met. He's like a tree planted by rivers of water. Has, has many options, has many opportunities, more than one. You, you, you not only have uh, a basket of eggs, you've got, you've got a, 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 whole, a whole barn full of eggs that you can, that you can depend on. That, that, that's a happy man. His, his fruit shall be brought in season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. Not, not that you will be prosperous in things, but that every effort that you endeavor to try will come to completion. Everything you put your hand to do, you will accomplish. You, you know how some, some, some people, anything they put their hand to do, it doesn't work out? Of course, that's not going to make you happy. But but happy is the man that avoids at least three things. Ungodly folk, sinners, uh, scornful people. Uh, that, that, that person delights in the law of the Lord. He meditates because, because that person is happy being in God's word. And in so doing, you're like a tree planted by rivers, channels of water and and because these things are met says the psalmist anything you put your hand to do you will accomplish it you will complete it you, you it, it will happen to you you may be denied early in life you may have had you may have had a, a resource in your life that that you were depending on to accomplish something that you had planned to accomplish, but that 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 resource was taken away from you. But guess what? What you plan to do with that resource, you lost it early in life. But then what you plan to do with it, you were able to accomplish it later. And by means that you never knew existed. On your behalf, so so that that's what the, the the rivers of water means. That that that's what the delight in the law of the Lord means, and, and that 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 that's what that's what verse verse three means in the life of the happy person. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Notice the ungodly are like trees too; they're like chaff. The ungodly are not so. That means that God ignores the ungodly's lifestyle. The 
There's a certain way we all have to live if we want to relate to God. There's just a certain way we have to live. It doesn't make you perfect. It just, it just puts you and keeps you in relationship with God. And if we study Psalm 1, as we study the rest of God's word, we, we, we learn we're not, we're not perfect. You're not going to dot every I, cross every T. You're not going to do everything right. But, but what you do is, what you do is, if you abide in his word, ungodly lifestyle, God ignores. And, and, and there's just a certain way, a certain attitude that we have to have if we're going to stay in relationship with God. You, you, you can't take on the devil's ways and then think that God is, is going to always be, be right there for you. No. You reap what you sow. And, 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 and the psalmist says, as in the Old Testament, the ungodly are not so. God ignores him. He's like the chaff which the wind driveth away. They're like trees. They're also like trees, but, but they don't have moral integrity. And, and that's what you need. All of us need that. We all need moral integrity. You know, moral integrity is not pointing fingers at everybody. Moral integrity is not hearing something and keeping it in your mind and in your spirit. That's not moral integrity. Especially when, when you don't care to know whether it's true or not. And, and, and one of the dangers that we live in in America today we live in a time when people don't care about what they think, what they believe, what they've heard, what they see. They don't care if it's true or not. That's a dangerous time to live in any society. I mean, we, we, whatever we hear, if it suits us, it's right, whether it's true or not. And that's a dangerous time to live in. The ungodly are not so. They're like the chaff which the wind driveth away. The Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Verse 5 says that many people who don't want to live in relationship with God are successful. They live a long time. Davies and Lazarus Lived a long time. Diabetes, he, he, he fared sumptuously. He, he, he wore fine linen. He lived a long life ignoring people. And, and there, there, there are ungodly people or there are people who, who live long lives and, and, and they, they are successful in what they do without a relationship with God. But by and by, we have to understand that there is a judgment in this world. And, 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 and there's some people you cannot convince that there's a God. You can't convince that there's a that there's a day of judgment. You can't convince them that there's a day of reckoning. That's why they act like they act. That's why people live like they live. That's why people, people do what they do. Get offended. They want to Exact vengeance right then. That, that, that there's no, that there's no, there's no, there's no suffering of some things. Some things we have to suffer in life. You, you can't attack everything that harms you. You can't, you can't retaliate against everything that, that offends you. But some, some things you're just going to have to give and take with. Because for some of us, there's a judgment. There's a day of reckoning. The ungodly are not so. 
They're like the chaff with which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall what? Shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. What the psalmist is saying here is, he's not saying that the, the ungodly is going to get their due right now. He's saying that they live a long time like us, like everyone else, like other people, without a relationship with God. But there is a judgment in the mind of this writer under the inspiration of, of, of the Holy Spirit in writing this song. That the, the writer believed in a judgment, in a day of reckoning, in a consummation of time. When, when, when every act shall be brought to bear for examination, whether it's good or whether it's bad. It's kind of like, like the, ecclesiastical, the ecclesiastical preacher Fear God and keep his commandments, for God will bring every act into judgment, whether it's good, whether it's bad. There is a day of reckoning. It's coming. And so for, for, for some of us, for some of us, we wonder, we wonder why does God not act? Well, he's going to act. But in his mercy, He's just as merciful to, to the wicked as to the righteous. The, the sun shines on the good and the bad. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. The, the, the weather, we, we, we all have a relationship with the weather. The good and the bad has a relationship with the sun, the moon, the rain, the snow, the wind. We all have a relationship with nature. The same relationship. Same day the rain fell on your house, it fell on that other person's house. So, so we have that same relationship. But, but, but the psalmist believes in a judgment. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall, shall perish. The Lord knows the way of, of the righteous. And the, 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 the righteous way may seem or appear to be dark and misty and uncertain, but God knows. The end of it. And then the psalmist says, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Not only will the ungodly be judged, but his way, her way, their way, shall also perish. That, that not only will the ungodly not be remembered, but the way they live will also not be. So what do we do with this song? What do we do with it? One, two, or three things. First of all, we need to reconsider God's concept of what a person should know and accept by way of being happy. Jesus says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths will not corrupt nor thieves break through and steal. Don't put your eggs in an environment of uncertainty. And I think we need to, to look at this song and see that God's concept of what it means to be happy is more beneficial because it, it helps that soul that desires not only a relationship with, with God, but the relationship with God. Not only a closer walk with God, but the way to walk. It, it, it helps us to, to understand that you can't relate to God on any terms, but on his terms. And his, his term is the best term. And, and I, should, I should correct that, that, that statement. Not his terms, but his term. Because he's the way, the truth, and the life. 
I mean, it, it, it really, it really helped me. It really, it really refocused my understanding on the song. You know, the 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 moral tenor of God's concept for for His people by way of what happiness is. Paul said in one of his letters to one of the churches that um, he had learned that whatever state he was in, he had learned to be content. Whether he was full or in want, whether he was, whether he was safe or in trouble, whether he was in health or in sickness, almost like a marriage vow. Whatever state, I mean, I've learned to be content. Paul, Paul learned what happiness in God's concept for, for, for God's people is. And, and we start with Psalm 1 and we go to the New Testament and we let we let Jesus into our life, give us not only everlasting life, but but the relationship with Him, where the Holy Spirit comes and brings perfect peace that the world cannot understand nor take away. Thank you for being with us. God bless you, and until next time. Holiness that behaves. God bless.